Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prey Paper and Ink, and for today's video I am part of a blog hop for Waffle, Fa Waffle Flowers February release. And to start off with, I have some B watercolor paper, and I put it in my stamp platform. And I'm using images from the new Be Her stamp set. And I started with two of the main images and then a couple of the little companion images because you can like kind of dress them up. It's the cutest thing. So I got those kind of lined up in my stamp platform and then I'm going to stamp these onto this watercolor paper with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. And this B watercolor paper has a fair bit of texture to it. It doesn't seem like that, but then when you stamp anything with detail, you really notice and you'll see here when I lift the lid. So using the positioner, I can stamp these multiple times until I get all of the details stamped. And then I had used my anti-static powder tool, of course, so that I can clear heat emboss these. Um, I, I, as usual, I sound like a broken record, but I always like to clear heat emboss when I stamp with VersaFine onto watercolor paper, mostly because I just like the little bit of like the glossy raised look you get. Plus it, it prevents me from smearing it. <laughs> so I did that on the one side and then on the other side I stamped the remaining two little images from the set and then I'd re-stamped the crown a few more times. So I've got everything stamped and clear heat embossed. And then I did really, really simple watercoloring using the Prima Pastel Dreams watercolor palette, which I'm kind of obsessed with since I got it. I just, I really like this setup of colors and they're just fun. And thankfully there's two browns in the set. So I use those to watercolor these. Although again, always hindsight. After I finished coloring these, I'm like, these would look really cute if you did them in whimsical colors too, like do them in the pastel colors. Just really, really cute. So I just went in with one of my little tonic brushes and the watercolors and just went along and started coloring everything in. I didn't do any layering or anything like that. Like I said, I kept it fairly simple. These images are just cute. This was easy. It was just fun. For the fox, I mixed a few colors to kind of get, you know, that, that re more reddish brown sort of a color by mixing the orange and the sort of ready color and the browns together. And then for the white areas of the fox, I actually use that like sort of blush color and just um, really water that down so it's really, really pale. So I did that and then um, the, the unicorn in the set. The unicorn is like, I love all the images in the set. I just think these little characters, they're so cute. But the unicorn just, it's just funny with his little, his little wings and cheeks and everything. So for him, I did a, the palest blue, watered it down because, you know, I was kind of thinking white for him. But I wanted to give him a little bit of color. And then um, I did his, I did his little like, the part of his mane that shows. Um, I just kind of did in rainbow order just to really bring in some more color since like the majority of him is, you know, almost white. So having um, a more fine brush like this just kind of enabled me to go in there. And then um, as I was doing all this, I started thinking because it's like, oh, I'm just going to do his little horn and his wings. And I was like, well, I already did the really pale blue for his body. So I'm going to do really, really pale purple for that. And then I remembered I have, of course, the <laughs> Ink on 3 liquid pixie dust, which I've shown in some other videos. And you just got to shake it up really, really well. You can just kind of paint it over top of things or you can mix it with your watercolors. It's just basically like kind of a sparkle medium that you can mix with your watercolors or any dye based sort of colors. I just took it, mixed up really well, put the tiniest, tiniest drop onto my watercolor palette there. And then just picked up with a brush and I just painted it onto his wings, painted it onto the little horn there and um, onto his mane because there was enough left over. And it just gives it just a really nice sparkle that it's another one of those ones where it's, it's subtle, but then when the light hits it, you see the sparkle. So for that, I did, I did that and then um, painted a little owl. And then normally I would probably, I could have just used the um, sparkle on the little crowns too but I had my Gonzai Tombi starry colors set out and I already had my you know heart set on doing the crowns with one of the golds. So that's what I use. I just mix that up really, really well with um, the water to get you know that pigment. And then I painted the crowns with that gold watercolor and as well as the star on that little like scepter. <laughs> so painted all of that. And then I went in and just kind of 
dabbed colors onto the like the gems of these crowns. So I just went along, picked up the color and just like lightly tapped the color because it's just tiny. So after I had done all of this watercoloring for all these little characters, I made sure everything was completely dry before um, using the coordinating wafer dies and taping all of those into place with washi tape. You always want to make sure everything is dry before you do any die cutting because otherwise there's a good chance you can tear your cardstock, etc. So everything is dry and I always apply the washi tape when I'm taping down my dies to the outside of the images. I never tape over them, especially with watercolor because the pressure of the die cut machine, you don't want it tearing anything. So I die cut everything, set it aside, and then I got to work on some backgrounds. So I grabbed more of this watercolor paper and it's six by nine. So I think that's another reason why I'm loving it because if you cut it in half, they're perfect for card fronts to watercolor and you have space to tape them down. So I did that with four pieces. I just cut them in half so they're, you know, four and a half by six inches. And then I'm going to tape these down to hardboards with my um, blue scotch painter's tape. I wasn't super particular about um, making sure the borders of the tape were perfectly straight or anything like that. Although every time I, I don't do that. And then when I do remove the tape, it's like, oh, that border just is so perfect. <laughs> but I just tape them down so that I have enough space to create my backgrounds. And I'm going to trim these down anyway. And I'm going to use the same watercolors again. I just sprayed them all down with water. I have fresh water in my... Um, cups to clean my brushes with and I just start by laying down just clean water on a background and I'm just using a flat brush another one of my like tonic brushes and then I'm just going to start painting these backgrounds and I'm just kind of mixing and going along and adding some layers and whatnot while it's still wet and letting them bl everything kind of blend into each other. Um, these blend really really nicely they're definitely creamy that's I guess the easiest way to kind of describe these like these are not um very transparent watercolors so it just kind of depends on the look you're going for or what you're used to working with but i really like them like i said i like i like the setup of these so um i wanted to do kind of basically like rainbowish backgrounds for all of these little characters so a couple of them i do kind of diagonally a couple of them i do kind of straight across up and down etc just to you know mix it up a little bit and kind of mix some of the colors some i apply just as is some i mix I'm just having fun with it and what like you can see what I mean about them not being transparent because you can really see the watercolor like on top of the painter's tape there. So I just kind of go back and forth to make sure the colors like blend into each other and don't have like super harsh lines in between each color and love how the first one turned out so then the second one I'm kind of doing the exact same thing just starting with different colors and just blending them into each other these were just fun I need to do more of this where you just kind of sit and experiment and do some backgrounds you know play more with the colors etc I get you know I start to like collect things when it comes to watercolor and other coloring mediums and need to take more time to like just kind of sit and play with them and experiment and just see what happens and with backgrounds especially this is a good way to kind of experiment with whether it be watercolors or your inks distress inks etc etc um it's fun to see the combos you can come up with the backgrounds you can come up with etc these backgrounds i kept simple um, I did think about, you know, using splatter while they're still wet. You could do, you, there's so many different things you can do, but I just wanted to paint the backgrounds and then once they're dry, decide what I was going to do with them. So this one I was kind of thinking like almost like a really pale kind of pastel sky and going just back and forth while keeping everything wet, um, not letting it dry until I was done applying all of the watercolor because once it starts drying, that's when you start getting, you know, the lines and the blooms and all that. So I went in, did that, and then with my final one, I went back in and did another basically rainbow one, just having fun with um, the colors and whatnot. So after I got everything painted, again, you want to make sure everything is 100% dry before you remove the painter's tape. If it is still wet at all, when you try to remove the painter's tape, it will tear, it'll just start ripping apart on the edges, which... Again, if my pieces are big enough, I try to make sure they're bigger than what my card front will be so that if I do end up tearing it, because more often than not I do, um, I can trim that off. 
but make sure everything is completely dry and then with painter's tape you basically like fold it over itself and just very slowly and carefully pull it away from the paper so i just peel off all of that painter's tape and that's where you see you can see like that crisp border and that's always like oh, i wish i had like had everything straight but whatever i was planning on trimming it down anyway because it is bigger than a2 card front so I have my background, so I'm going to trim down the edges with my paper trimmer, and I'm trimming them to smaller than an A2 size. I ended up trimming them to just under, it was four inches by five and a quarter. So just trimmed off all of those edges. And then this is when I decided I wanted to add some splatter. So I used that same Gonsai Tombi Starry Color Set in that same gold, and um, just put these in my splat box to prevent me from getting splatter absolutely everywhere but just mixed up that gold onto another one of the tonic brushes. And then I'm just tapping it against my fingers to add gold splatter to all of these backgrounds. And usually, you know, I my go-to is usually white. I like to add white splatter. I'll add black splatter with the Distress, um, black soot Distress paint. But I had pulled out the gold watercolors um, not too long, like a week ago in a, in a previous video. And I've just literally had them sitting here because, you know, I re was reminded that I owned these. So now my, my obsession is gold, gold splatter on all of things. <laughs> so splatter all of these and then set these aside to dry where I wouldn't touch them because that's always my thing usually is, you know, you go to touch it to see if it's dry and you end up smearing it. So I set these aside and made sure they were completely dry before I handle them. So I've got my backgrounds, I have my little die cut critters here, set those aside, and then I gotta get my sentiments made for all of these cards. So I'm using the new label greetings from Waffle Flower Forma Greetings. These are fun, like they're label greetings, but they're a script font. So they're just kind of a very different look, which I just think is fun. So I lined up the greetings I wanted to use on black cardstock in my stamp platform. And I'm going to ink these up with clear embossing ink. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool, ink these up with clear embossing ink. And then I'm going to um, heat emboss these with detail white embossing powder. And I made sure my cardstock was big enough. And then this way I can just keep rotating the cardstock kind of in counterclockwise and keep stamping these sentiments since... I did the four critters. I decided I would make four cards, although you could totally stack, like, you know, line up all these critters onto one and it would look really cute too. But I need to get a lot of thank you cards done. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of thank you cards I need to send out to people. So I wanted to make four separate cards here. So this is my way of getting, you know, more done. So I did all the critters at once. I did all the backgrounds at once. Now I'm doing all of the stamping and heat embossing for the sentiments all at once. So I stamp, apply the embossing powder, heat emboss that and then line this back up, just rotate it, line it back up into my stamp platform, stamp it again, and then do that until I've done it four times. And then once I have all of these stamped and heat embossed, there's a coordinating wafer die set. These you could obviously trim with a paper trimmer because they're rectangles. I've always said I if if there's dies available, I prefer the dies. I like the the smooth pressure cut edges you get from wafer dies. It just, to me, it just finishes it off. Plus, in cases like this, it's just faster to die cut than it would be to try and like take every single piece and then trim everything down. You could also trim with scissors, but like I said, I prefer that pressure cut edge. So I taped the wafer dies into place and then started running these through my die cut machine. Got everything die cut. And um, once I've got them die cut, the rest of these cards are just gonna start coming together. So I have my white, cardstock bases and um, for the insides of all of them I'm going to stamp the critter I'm going to adhere to the outside and I'm just going to stamp it with some distress oxide ink and I use a different color for each card just just because just because I can so I'm going to ink up like the unicorn with the broken china distress oxide ink I'm going to stamp that to the inside of the card and I was thinking ahead this time I was thinking ahead <laughs> and I pulled out coordinating envelopes for all these cards and for each envelope I'm going to stamp the critter on the envelope too just because it gives that a little extra something. So I've got matching envelopes so I'm going to ink up that unicorn with the same oxide ink, stamp him onto the envelope and then go on and do all the other card bases with and envelopes with different colors of oxide inks. And then to adhere everything, I'm using a combination of 3D, the thin 3D foam squares, as well as Simon Says Stamps Big Mama foam tape, because they're the same thickness, which is 
thinner than standard dimensionals and foam tape. So it pops everything up, but not too much. Just gives it that little bit of dimension. So I adhere my little critters. I'm going to adhere my sentiments with this one. I'm going to give him his little, his little scepter with his, his little, his little star scepter. So that I just adhered into place with some craft tacky adhesive. And then all the other ones I adhered in the exact same way. And then I adhered little crowns to them. Since the unicorn has his horn and his sparkly little wings and everything, I gave all the other um, little critters crowns because it's just cute. And then on the inside of the card, I adhered the thanks um, label grading stamp right below the critter just to finish it off. And then I'm going to adhere my watercolor backgrounds to my card bases with more craft tacky glue because that gives me that little bit of wiggle room for a few seconds to adhere everything, line it up, make sure it's straight, etc. And I've got that nice white border anyway with the card after saying, you know, how much I liked it on the watercolor paper. That's why I trim it down too because then I get the nice white border with the card base. So in the end, I still win with that. <laughs> and then as a final bit of embellishment, um, well, if I had released these last month, and I just, I love these uh, enamel dots. I have the Up and Running, which is the color ones, and then I have the Stardust enamel dots, which have silver and white glitter. And these colors just go so well with this Primo watercolor palette, like just that more, more pastel sort of colors. So I kind of sprinkled those rather liberally on all of these cards, just kind of adhering them here and there over the similar colors on the backgrounds. And then once I get those adhered, that's going to finish off this fun little card set. So like I mentioned in the beginning, this is part of a blog hop. I will have links to the other stops on the hop with there's tons of inspiration and all that fun stuff. There's giveaways, etc. So I will have all that info and the links in the description box below the video. There'll be a link to my blog. All the info will be on my blog and then I'll also have a supply list with links to everything if you are interested. You can check that out below. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye!